greatest enemy of knowledge is ignorance. It's an illusion of knowledge. You are not entitled to your opinion. You are entitled to an informed opinion. G Mac and Queen, since I know you're going to hear this, learn to keep your mouth shut and let another man speak for itself. Because you damn near stopped this video from even going up before I was going to report it. Do your due diligence and your research. You even see I put up a Messy Marv video where he was on WAC 100's side, period. So do your research and get off WAC 100 dick. What up though, this your boy DOC. And here we go with the reverse psychology. Luckily, we live in a world right now where it's independent thinking. There's not only a couple... Um, Let's say there's not a couple outlets that's being paid to create a narrative to believe the bullshit that people put into this world and, you know, people follow behind it because of maybe their connection, because of either just being a follower or they just want to ride someone dick. So hopefully, you know, Whack 100 can spoon feed them or something of that nature. Now, this whole time with this whole situation, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. This whole time with the situation of disrespecting Tupac, yes, since the beginning, anybody that follows this know, yes, I am a Tupac fan or a fan of his music. But at the end of the day, it's not like if Michael Jordan, I consider the best basketball player of all, all times, if the motherfucker do something stupid that I'm not going to call him out on it, that's not going to take away from me being a fan of that particular individual. But now we're going to stick to facts and facts only. The main reason why I've covered this, because like Gonzo said in our interview, if you haven't seen that, go back into my videos and check that out. What's making an individual talk about this 20 years later? And that's the main thing that I've been trying to dig into to figure that out. And as you dig into that question of why are people talking about Tupac 20 years later, other than the surface level of, yes, it's, you know, promoting for the movie at the same time, it's like, okay, if this is promoting to the movie, that means there has to be a paycheck attached to that. And if it's a paycheck attached to that, who's paying that money? In every situation, you always got to follow the money. You follow the money, then you'll find out who the real criminals or the whatever in any situation is and the more people dig into the situation they're seeing like lt e e1 or whatever is possibly allegedly paying whack 100 but this is the reason why i'm making this video because now all of a sudden you got people i don't know who these individuals are if they are part of you know the one or two people people constantly Referred to that still from WAC 100's neighborhood, you know, uh, sending messages or whatever, talking about a certain outlets that's creating a hate campaign for WAC 100. And to me, to even say it's a hate campaign for WAC 100 is hypocritical within itself. But you can't really have a logical type of conversation with a person that's possibly ignorant because the only thing an ignorant person is going to do is try to turn something to fear and anything that i say i'm gonna stand behind it regardless because there's no you whack 100 wouldn't want no one to talk bad about one of his dead homies and i know if he's not pure full of shit then i know that's something he would agree with so he can't get mad at someone else doing that you can't sit up and say oh Okay, now let me just stick to this point then. Ever since I put up the interview with G Principal for the past couple of days, WAC 100 been going to his Instagram to discredit G Principal. I don't know G Principal. All I know is this this person is from his hood. He know him. They have some dealings. G Principal know his older brothers. Them two individuals know WAC 100 and him personally know each other. They might not have the best friendship. They might have not kicked it every day, but they know each other. And that particular area is not like a super big area. So with certain things, that they both know about each other. Just like when some information came out about oh, G Principal supposed to be attached to some case, you know, uh, that's revolving around snitching and some other individuals. I'm not going to put the person on blast that kind of referred this particular individual to me but i reached back out to them and said hey if this type of information is known 
you know that this person possibly is attached to a case where there's snitching or alleged snitching let me know that don't keep me on the blind side because me personally as doc hicks tv i'm not here to take sides i'm here to ask real questions for people that's viewing this to get the real about the situation so they can pick and choose if they want to rock with the movie if they want to rock with whack 100 that's my purpose here and i would have asked g principal about any of the snitching allegations in that particular interview for to give him an opportunity to explain his side or whatever he had to say about it he could have said but that wasn't presented to me so i didn't get i didn't know i was blindsided so i wasn't able to ask him that so now whack 100 goes back to his instagram because there's some dude named k9 or something that's saying he was a on death row and some other people was his bodyguard oh, a whole bunch of other little quote-unquote politics of the motherfuckers around whack 100 you know what i'm saying talking shit about him all right, listen, I know you live and direct from L.A. County Jail. You got your boy, he called himself G Principal, as we know him as uh, Big Lip Mark Ass Pierre. And who's this dude, K-9, homie? Who is K-9? I don't know this nigga. Who is that? This nigga K-9 is the nigga blood that I met through this nigga named Poole. This little nigga posted from Swan, and, uh, you know, blood's hanging out over the street, though, so what is I met him through the cool nigga or something like that, you know, so... Hey, no, look, check it out, check it out. Check it out, you remember your boy, well, you know Pierre called himself G Principal, right? So you, listen, what was my number one reason for not fucking with the boy? And this, you know, I done tried a thousand times to get blood hooked y'all up, and you like, but I ain't fucking with that blood. You know, the rose is the rose. So you wouldn't fuck with blood, you know? Now, how many times did that dude call my phone on some friendly shit? Yeah, blood done called blood. Blood did that shit, but I can't even tell this time it's calling blood. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, then the nigga get weird. Talking about I told the ones about a hundred thousand dollars or some old weird shit. First of all, nigga, I ain't never did no snitching. Second of all, nigga, you ain't never told me what no hundred thousand but here go another question though. Here go another question. You remember back in 1991, 92, when I first stopped fucking with this G Principal Pierre dude? What was the reason? Oh yeah, we pulled up over there on Fillmore Street. Put some work in. So he out there shooting dice with the enemies. So this is what I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out. When did this dude ever become a factor in our neighborhood? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I went to jail, but I don't know. What happened? No, blood. The thing is, is blood just started running around doing his own thing. Blood ain't never been pushing no lie like that, blood. You know, blood's running around this motherfucker. And, you know, created his own little gang. slaughterhouse out and shit some old shit. And uh, trying to create his own shit because, you know, he was getting into the homies because of what his brother did. You the know, snitching. That's what happened with blood. Now, now, why didn't G. Principal understand that driving your brother to a courtroom to take a stand on a homie to snitch was wrong? I mean, what's the problem? Oh, blood, I mean, shit, you hit me with that, I didn't even know that. You know, motherfuckers take us to this. Motherfuckers, if anybody take anybody to the courthouse and knowing that person's gonna get on the stand, you just as guilty as the person getting on the stand. That's just, that's just the rules of the streets right there, blood, period. So listen, you know? so listen. Remember when he kept begging you to get a meeting with me? Being what was what, what was his intentions on? What did he want out the meeting? What, what did he want me to help him with? I want you to help him with music and shit, you know? I want to fuck with you on the music. I want you to help with the music and shit, blood, you know? And he kept trying to, you know, get us, get us, get us to hook up, get niggas to hook up, and so niggas to fuck with him on the music. He wants you to help him with the music. That was his intentions. 
So once I told him I couldn't fuck with him on the music because of the snitching shit, I guess all of a sudden he say, uh, I ain't, I ain't from the hood. And why does dude why does dude keep popping your name? He keep telling me he keep telling me me and you supposed to get down or some shit. I what are you talking about? Keep telling you that. I don't know. The nigga keep putting it up that uh whack and pool rider uh supposed to run the fade. We never ran the fade. <laughs> Well, how long? But know, how, how long we been getting into it? Well, we been getting into it for thirty over thirty four years, bro. We been doing this for over thirty four years. Come on, bro. But the vultures came out, bro. You know, I guess they took that argument and all the shit we was getting and took that and ran and seen you one thing and seen me another, bro. Come on, bro. Niggas, no way, never finna go against each other for another weird ass niggas, bro. Look, I'm gonna turn this shit off and I'm gonna holler at you on some walls. Hold up. Hey, let them know. Let, let them know who on the phone so they know what it is. Yeah, it's Pooh Rider, bro. The rich baby gangster. I only got a couple of months to do. Can't not keep my name out your mouth, boy. Go clean your name up, bro. You know, I know all the dirt. I've been behind these walls 20 years, nigga. You out there in Vegas getting shot down and beat beat up, bro. Keep, keep my name out your mouth, boy. I ain't never been your first somebody going, fool. Hey, what this dude talking about? Whack ain't never had no dealings with death row. What he talking about? Yeah, I don't know. Shit, we'll figure out. I figured out what I run into him, you know. They want me to give him some attention. The they want you know, out there in Vegas. He fucked his name up, bro. You know, blood, you know, blood at that jail, that county or wherever he was at. You know, them niggas was whooping on him and shit, bro. He wouldn't fight back, so blood had to PC up, you know. You know, nigga, niggas heard that shit years ago. Bro fucked his name up. Now, so now I get a person that sends me a message like, oh, you and such and such and such and such, you know, this is shutting down your hate campaign. You can't even say anybody is creating a hate campaign when every week or every two weeks, Wack 100 is into it with Mano, Wack 100 is into it with Tax Tone, Wack 100 is into it with this person, Wack 100 is into it with that person, you know, he's into it with this person in his hood. The common denominator is who? The common denominator is who? If you if you take anybody in this world and everybody they run across or 90 percent of the people they run across, they have a problem with. Sometimes they got to look in the mirror. Maybe it's, maybe it's that individual. But if it is a paycheck attached to it and I must shamelessly plug my Tupac decoded, um, my Tupac decoded series that's going to happen here. We're going to get to the bottom of E1 and with the, who, whomever they're paying and all that stuff, you know, to slander or raise, raise awareness about Pac so they can, you know, make all this money about it. And there's certain people that's tied to that. It has a lot to do with Death Row Records. And that's the reason why all this bickering and shit is happening with these certain individuals because it's a lot of money that's on the line from these situations that they're trying to get from the people that have the money that's attached to Tupac Estate and likeness. So people are sucking dick. People are, not literally, but people are dick riding and doing all type of things with two other individuals that's attached to that money so we're gonna keep it flat out we're gonna keep it 100 we're gonna keep it real you can't get mad at the person that's interviewing and i'm not playing the oh i'm the radio guy shit because like i said it's other videos that i have made that was solely just my opinion it wasn't interviews and i still stand behind anything that i said as far as it's disrespectful to talk about a dead man especially 20 years later and what's the reason for it? Just because someone who, who, if Wack 100 was just on his Instagram talking about the roses are red and the sky is blue, someone came into your, you know, uh, Instagram and just started talking about Tupac and that's what started you to slandering him. No, we're not stupid. And the thing is, now people are going to great lengths to try to protect their name because they have so many individuals starting to nail down on you. You can't go into the public and totally disrespect someone that has millions of fans and not expect for the fans, the commentators, the bloggers, or the world to start looking at you now and start picking you apart the same way you're doing a dead man. So we got to use some logic, but you can't uh, allow, you can't even 
use those type of words in these type of situations when you're dealing with in individuals and i'm gonna end it on this like the guy said the hate campaign blah 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 this and that i have reached out maybe two or three different times directly to whack 100 in his comment section and added him to say do you want to do an interview because i just have a few questions i wanted to ask to give him the opportunity you know what i'm saying but now what he's doing is taking it and pushing it to us you know it's all a manipulated and it's not really even checkers or chest or checkers because it's no thought process into it even though you're trying to send people oh click in the bio you know to send people to your channel 99 percent of the people are hitting dislike on your video and what crowd are you going to have there the, the two people from your hood that you spoon feeding you know and then the few other people that just maybe think you're going to do something for them no I've been saying this from the beginning. If this is your way of trying to promote your podcast or any of that thing in, in that lane, this is the wrong way of going about it. Sometimes I understand people think the shock value. Yes, it gets you 10, 15 minutes of fame for people to start talking about you doing blogs and all that stuff. But when it does settle, are you really going to have a fan base of people that's going to come back and support your movement? That's what you need to sit down at the table with the individuals that you conspire to do whatever you're doing. That would be the advice I would give to you. Think three, four steps ahead instead of just towards tomorrow. Because if that is what you're trying to do is promote your podcast or gain some traction for whatever reason. If you was paid for it, come out and just say that you were paid for it. At least it would make more sense. Even though, yes, the people that's paying you might have to deal with some backlash. But at least it make more a little bit more sense. And won't make your words seem hypocritical of saying, you know, people creating a hate campaign for WAC 100. And they don't know him when for the past month and a half, two months you've been talking about a man that you don't know.